Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Simply Food by T.Y. So today, I had a request to make some sloppy joes and my homemade potato wedges. Uh, so I have those already here soaking in some water. Uh, but look, this is the thing. Sloppy joe is such an easy dish to make. But I think the manwich stuff that comes in tin cans is absolute trash. So I wanted to show you guys how I make mine from scratch. So I have, of course, the ground beef here. You can use ground chicken, you can use ground turkey, you can use whatever you would like. For seasonings, I have garlic powder, cayenne powder, onion powder, seasonal salt, and as you guys know, I pretty much put slap your mama seasoning about damn near everything. I have one large green pepper here that's been chopped and minced. I have a half of a large yellow onion, and then one packet of sesame. So that's pretty much all of the seasonings. As far as the wet ingredients, I use barbecue sauce, I use ketchup, and I use mustard. The best thing about doing it this way and not using the manwich, you have the ability to control how salty you want it, how sweet you want it, how tangy you want it. You can vary pretty much on all of the seasonings as well as all of the wet ingredients. For the potato wedges, those are pretty much simple. We're just gonna put some seasoning and some flour, Get a little egg dredge going, put it in the egg, put it in the flour, throw it in the grease, you got yourself some homemade wedges. But we'll get to that later. So for now, let me go ahead and get my pan nicely heated up, and then when we come back, we'll be ready to cook. All right, guys, we are back. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is go ahead and start to sweat out the green pepper and the onion. I already have my pan heated here. So I'm just gonna take about one to two tablespoons of butter and just gonna throw that right into the pan. And then I'm gonna also add in, like I said, the onion, as well as the green pepper. And we're just gonna to try to sweat those out. You can add just a tiny amount of salt if you would like at this point. I wouldn't get too crazy on the salt because you're gonna be seasoning as we go. But, you know, adding the salt, just a pinch of salt helps the sweating process. So we're just gonna add just a little bit of salt, not too much. And then you can go as heavy as you would like on the black pepper. <clears throat> this is the thing, guys. When it comes to cooking, I know for some people, they feel very handicapped when it comes to cooking. So they need exact measurements for absolutely everything. But this is the thing. Cooking is all about cooking with soul and cooking with love. So as I record, you know, and do more and more videos... You guys are probably going to start to notice that I'm not going to be giving a lot of measurements because I don't want you guys to get fixated on needing to know measurements. You know your palate. You know what is too salty. You know what is too spicy. And you will start to learn how to eye your seasonings. You will be able to know, okay, that beef doesn't look like it has enough pepper in it. That, that fried chicken wasn't golden brown this time, so I need to add more paprika the next time. You know what I mean? you'll start to learn those things. So as I continue, you know, to post these videos, you know, if you guys have specific questions about measurements, you know, by all means comment and, you know, leave, you know, a message in the comment section below. And I can always, you know, email you guys exact measurements if that's what you need, but I won't be too fixated on doing that while I'm cooking live. So I'm going to let those sweat down for about two to three minutes just so they can get nice and tender because I'm not really too keen on onions or green peppers. But what I've noticed as I've gotten older, if I really let them cook down a little bit, I don't mind it because it does give a fantastic flavor to your ground beef. And that goes for spaghetti, that goes for burgers, whatever. Like when I want to cook burgers on the grill, I do add green peppers and onions, but what I do is I cook them all first and then I let them cool off and then I add it to the mix. But that's, you know, a whole different video. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna let those sweat out for a few minutes and then when we come back, we'll be ready to add the ground beef and all of our seasonings. See you soon. All righty, y'all, we are back. So like I said, I've let these sweat off for about two to three minutes. Just to sweat them out. I'm not trying to saute them. I don't want to fry them. Just want to cook, you know, cook them down just a little bit. And it smells fantastic in this house. 
So what we're gonna do now is go on ahead and add in our ground beef, or like I said, whatever type of meat you would like. It can be ground chicken, it can be ground turkey, whatever you would like. So we're just gonna get all of those peppers and onions incorporated. And then we're gonna start adding in our seasonings. So first, let me just give this a little mixing. And you know, guys, I just wanted to say something really quick about ground beef. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people are really particular when they get their burgers and, you know, and they get their steaks and they want them rare and, and medium well and well and, you know, stuff like that. So when I was in cooking school, I was always told that you should absolutely never get anything ground beef not well done. There's way too much bacteria that can be transferred in ground beef. So when you're getting, you know, your burgers rare and stuff like that, you're, you're taking a big chance there. Now, steaks is something completely different. You can get those rare. You can get them medium well. You can get them well done. You know, you can do whatever you would like. But I was always taught in school that ground beef you should always, you know, fully, fully cook. And I don't believe in gray ground beef. I notice a lot, you know, when I've watched other people's cooking videos or just, you know, being around other people watching their cooking techniques, people kind of tend to stop cooking ground beef when it becomes gray. And that's, that's not, <laughs> that's not it, y'all. That's not the move. You have got to cook it all the way through. The first thing that's going to happen is the ground beef is going to release a lot of oil. It's going to release all of its natural fats. Then what's going to happen is it's going to turn gray, but that does not mean that that caramelization has happened yet. The next step is all of the water that's in the pan is going to evaporate. And then that's when the real frying happens. It should be a beautiful golden brown color. It should never be gray. Gray beef is not the move. Don't do it. Okay, guys, so I kind of got this all nicely mixed up. I'm not going to worry about mincing it up too, too much at this point because we'll deal with that later. I'll just set this to the side. So now we're going to go ahead and start adding in our seasonings. So just a little trick about sasson. I always add this in at the last second. I don't add this in, you know, too much beforehand. Honestly, I don't know why I do it that way. It's just, it's just a habit. So if you're wondering why... Why is he waiting so long to put that in? That's, that's about why. All right, so I'm gonna turn this down on seven. Now the temperature of the pan is starting to rise back up a little bit. I'm gonna add in my Slap Your Mama seasoning. And again, remember guys, I said it you know, a little bit earlier in the clip, you're probably not gonna see me you know, measuring things out. And it might seem like I am shaking the hell out of this thing and putting so much seasoning in it. But I'm going to tell you something. Ain't nothing worse than some bland ass food. And my food never is overly salted. So, you know, I have a pretty good gauge on when it's time to stop. Um, you know, so. And the good thing is, you know, don't be afraid. Because if you don't add enough, you can always. And this is a tip for cooking all over. You can always add more salt, but it is real hard to take it away. So just always be mindful of that. You know, over salting something can be real dangerous. And again, when I use onion powder and garlic powder, I use onion powder, not onion salt. And when I use garlic powder, I use garlic powder, not garlic salt, because that stuff is really potent. So now I'm just putting in the garlic powder. And now, again, cayenne, you can put it in or you can take it out. It's completely up to you, whatever you like. You know, I'm not a huge, huge spice person, but I do like that little, oh, what was that? You know, so I, I do put just a little bit. So again, for the seasonings, we have cayenne. We have onion powder. We have seasonal salt. We have Slap Your Mama Creole seasoning. The garlic powder. 
And then once the ground beef is almost done cooking, that's when I'll add in the sesson. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a nice mix in just to make sure that all of the meat is soaking up all of those good seasonings we've just added in there. And then what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm just gonna let this cook. I'm not gonna rush this process. I'm gonna let all the grease release itself from the beef. I'm gonna let all of the water evaporate from the pan. And then once I hear that beautiful sizzling sound, I'll know all the water has left, the ground beef. And then it's gonna start charring over. And then we're gonna add in the liquids, and guys, you know it's done. This is not a hard meal to make, but it's so good. You know, you can put this over a baked potato, you can have it on a bun, you can eat it by the bowl, not have it with anything. You know, it's just a nice, fun, easy meal that most kids always love. And like I said, you know, if you have kids that don't like onions and green peppers, I'm telling you, the trick is to really cook those onions and green peppers down prior to adding in the ground beef. Because what happens is, once you add that ground beef in, most of your major frying and sauteing is already done. So what happens is those green peppers and those onions are still gonna have that hard crunch. And that's what the kids tend to not like. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign out. I'm gonna let this cook. And then when we come back, I'm gonna show you how I mince this meat down because I don't like huge chunks of ground beef. So that's that. And we will be back in just a few moments. Let me just give you a little close up so you can see what's going on there. And like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and let that cook down. And then when I come back, I'll show you how much of the mustard, ketchup, and barbecue sauce I add, and then we can wrap this on up. I'll see you soon. Alrighty guys, so I've let this ground beef cook for about a good 15 minutes on a medium high. And if you listen, it has a nice little sizzling going on and there's beautiful little brown bits all over. That means all of the moisture is now completely out of this ground beef, which is fantastic. So now what you wanna do is turn your temperature down on a lower setting. And then I'm gonna show you guys what I use to mince my meat. By all means, you can use whatever you would like, but my handy dandy on it, a potato masher. And I just use that to just, you know, just to mince it out a little bit. Because I just don't like huge chunks of ground beef. And I just do a little bit. I mean, I'm not trying to pulverize it, honestly. I'm just trying to Mince it down just a little bit. And in the back here, let me just show you guys. While you guys are doing this part, go on ahead and get your oil ready. Because as soon as I put the wet ingredients in this mixture here, we're going to go on ahead and start our fries. So make sure you have that oil ready. Because you remember what I said when I was talking about that buttermilk fried chicken video. You always got to make sure your oil is at the right temperature when you're frying things. Because if not, stuff will come out soggy. All right, so that's that's good enough. Cause I'm getting ready to start making a damn mess. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. The meat is so seasoned. Evil. Jesus. Now we're gonna add it in, folks. Oh my god, the meat is delicious. Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. So we put in the one packet of sassons. Now, if you want yours on the tangy side, put a lot of mustard. Me, I almost kind of like equal parts. So, you know, I gradually will add stuff in. That was probably about two tablespoons there. For the barbecue sauce, I'm probably gonna add about a half a cup of barbecue sauce. That's about a half a cup of barbecue sauce. And then I'm gonna add a half a cup of ketchup. If you don't want to use ketchup, by all means, you can use tomato paste, that's completely fine if you wanna use concentrated tomato paste. And I've used about a half a cup of ketchup. That's it for the wet ingredients. We're gonna turn this on low. And now watch. We're just gonna mix this all up. When I tell y'all the smell in this house right now is something serious, 
this is so, it's such an easy, easy, easy meal to make. And it's so much better than using that tin can stuff. I think it's called Manwich. This just, I mean, just everything in this just tastes fresh because you know, you're adding in all of the ingredients yourself. And then, like I said, you know, you can keep tasting it and see if you wanna add more ketchup or if you want it sweeter, add more barbecue sauce. If you want it more on the tangy side, you can add more mustard. This is also a good time for you to start tasting it to see if you need any more salt. You know, this is this is around because we're in the home stretch for this part of this video. This is pretty much done at this point. We're just going to put a lid on this, put it on low, let it cook for maybe another 10, 15 minutes. And guys, we have homemade sloppy joe. So let me just give this a quick tasting really quick, just so I can check to make sure I put the right amount of wet ingredients in. Jesus. You know what? Mm, mm hmm. This is that little kickback of cayenne. The slight bit of tanginess from the mustard. That was just about right there. So that's it. I'm going to pop a lid on this, let it cook for about another 10 to 15 minutes on low, and the sloppy joes are done. I'll give you a closer shot up of this when we get towards the end of the video. So for now, I'm going to sign out. And I'm going to get us ready so we can start making our potato wedges. See you soon. All right, you guys, we are back. And now I'm about to go on ahead and start my potato wedges. So really quick, I went ahead and measured out this stuff because I know y'all are going to ask. So I said, let me just go on ahead and do it now. So for the flour, we have two cups of all-purpose flour. For the seasoning, we have one tablespoon of seasonal salt, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and I think that is about it as far as the seasonings go for that. I have three large eggs here, and then honestly, the eggs will kind of, and as well as the flour, honestly, this here will depend on how many people you're feeding and how many potatoes you're trying to cook. These, this was only two potatoes, but they were gigantic potatoes. So, you know. So what I'm gonna do is take my three eggs and I'm just gonna pour them over top of the potatoes. Guys, I'm here to make sure that you guys can cook quick and promptly. We're not about to make this complicated. All I'm trying to do right now is just make sure that each of these fries Got some egg coating on it, and that's it. Cooking does not have to be complicated, nor do you have to dirty up a million dishes. This is doing the exact same thing as if, if you were to have the eggs in a separate bowl and dip it and doing it and all that. This is, this is just fine. Those eggs are coated on those potatoes. Let me give my hands a quick rinsing really quick. And then we will start the frying process. So let me go on ahead and wipe off my counter. Clean as you go, people. When I was in cooking school, we learned a term called mise en place, which means to put everything in place. I'm gonna tell you, that is the key to success when you are cooking. Have your station and everything all lined up, ready to go. If you do that, you'll never forget any ingredients. You'll have everything there. It won't take you long to cook. Everything will be all, you know, already in place. The one thing that I forgot to add in this, which I'm gonna do right now, is you wanna also add in one tablespoon of paprika. Paprika doesn't really do anything for flavor, but it's what gives that beautiful coloring on a lot of foods. Um, and you wanna use regular paprika. I only use smoked paprika if I'm cooking meats that I want, you know, to have a, a grill taste or a smoky taste to it. Um, I use that for a lot of stuff out, you know, when I'm cooking outside on the grill. All right, so all the seasonings have been incorporated. Our grease is ready to go. Yes, Lord. So now I'm just gonna coat my fries. Now, if you have the time, you know, and you have time to spare, a good tip and trick so that you can get a double coating on these 
Once you put the flour on them, put them on a baking sheet with parchment paper and pop them in the fridge for about 20 minutes. It'll allow all the flour to really stick to it, but we don't have all that time today. As you can see, that grease is nice and hot. Let me tell you something, folks. The easiest way to get yourself burned when you are cooking with oil is to play around with the grease. All you gotta do is just put it in there. Don't go playing in it. Don't go, you know, just throwing the damn thing in the grease because then it'll splash everywhere. All you gotta do is just simply sit it inside and it's just that easy. You'll never get burned. Shake off that excess flour and just pop them in there. Make sure your potato has some of that egg dredge on it. Shake off the excess flour, pop it in there. If you have to, you know, mix up your potatoes a little bit just to make sure you're getting some that has, you know, the egg on it. And that's pretty much it, folks. You know, this is really simple. You know, when they're done, when they come out, if they're not salty enough to your liking. Now, see what I just did there? That was ignorant. Don't do that. Don't ever just let something just drop into the grease. Because, see, that's how you get damn house fires. So don't do that. Uh, but what I was about to say was, you know, if it's not salty enough to your liking, you can always, you know, put some Old Bay seasoning on them to top them off afterwards, which is always delicious. I'm from Maryland, so, you know, we put Old Bay on damn near every damn thing. Um, I'm only going to put maybe one more potato in here. Again, the key to getting anything crispy is one, making sure that the grease is the right temperature, and two, making sure that you do not overcrowd the pan because as you add everything in, the temperature is gonna slowly but surely continue to drop. So I'm gonna let those fry. When I come back, I'll show you what they look like when we take them out, and then we're gonna wrap this video up. I'll see you soon. Alrighty guys, welcome back. So what I'm gonna do now is take these, the last set of these wedges out of the grease. They've been in there for about, about 10 minutes or so. It kind of just depends on how thick you cut your potatoes on how long they're gonna to take to cook. Uh, these are pretty big potatoes, so I let them kind of stay in there for a decent amount of time. So I'm gonna show you how these look, and then I'm gonna make a nice plate for you guys to see, and then that'll be it for today. All right. So as you guys can see, those are the wedges. They are nice and crispy. And this is what I was talking about. When you use the paprika, it gives that golden color to your potatoes. So let me make a plate for you guys, and then we are all set. So I have two potato buns here that I've toasted, and we're just gonna put some of our Sloppy Joe mix right on the top, like so. And then just put a few of our wedges that we've just made on as well. And when they come out, guys, you can put, um, sprinkle a little bit of Old Bay on the top of them, you know, just to give it a little bit of an extra flair. And that's it. There are my homemade sloppy joes and potato wedges. All right, thank y'all once again so much for tuning in today. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions, leave it in the comment box below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.